is you are watching and listening to Tags Live, aka Talk About Gay Sex, the live edition. We're here every Wednesday night on the Vocal platform, V-O-K-L platform. This is episode 434. I'm your host, Stevie, alongside my co-host, Cody Marie Stoggett. How the hell are you doing, Cody? Hello, darling. I'm keeping it cute today, tonight, on this lovely evening. You know? Absolutely. This is my boo thing, and we're about to have a great show. I can't wait. I'm really excited about tonight's show. There's so much to cover. Oh, we yes. are in front of a live virtual audience. So hi to people like Brandon, Eli. Looks like some Oleg. people are joining us live for the first time so we love it oleg just showed up Mm -hmm. so we want you guys to weigh in and tell us your thoughts opinions ask questions and we will filter that out throughout the whole show okay and one of the things we love to do on tags live is read comments oftentimes from tags podcast which drops every tuesday wherever you get your podcasts including youtube one of them came from johnny johnny wrote in loved episode 433 just wanted to comment on the adam lambert story while i do agree that actors should get the role if they get the part we don't have that many lgbt icons or historical figures and it mm. seems like these roles always go to straight actors. Doesn't seem to happen the other way around. Cheers, Johnny from Uptown. Uptown. Oh, Uptown, New York. Uptown, Uptown. Get it. Is it Uptown, New York or Uptown, I mean, Oakland? Oh. Is Uptown, Oakland? Yeah. I'm not I really sure I have no to idea. ask him. Yeah, we got to let her know. We got to get some clarification on this. We need the producer in our ear. He's telling exactly. me he doesn't know either. <laughs> Thank you for commenting. We love it when you comment back on, and I do agree, there aren't as many icons out there to play some of these roles. So valid point that you're making there. Totally agree. I was thinking about it a little bit more. And it would be kind of cool to see Adam Lambert play the part because he can sing. And also, hear me out. Yeah, go. He has been touring with Queen Mm -hmm. and playing Freddie Mercury, not playing for Freddie Mercury, singing Freddie Mercury. And my friend saw him, who's a huge Queen fan, and said that although he lacks maybe that uber, uber high note that Freddie could get in the Okay. Back in the day, he puts on an amazing show, and he sure does a great job with it, and he thinks he was awesome. And this is coming from a Queen fan. So, oh, wow. You know, yes. I think it's kind of cool. I think Adam Lambert's doing some really great things out there, taking the you know taking his American Idol and really pushing forward with some new innovative content out there music i think he has a new album coming out or it just came out oh wow that is all going to i think it's coming out and it's going to be all reinterpretations of classic 80s songs and i'm really excited about it so he's doing some really cool things i kind of have my eye on him so i don't mind i wouldn't mind if he played was up for the role yeah, I agree with you. Adam Lambert definitely has the notes. He can sing his face off. Yeah. And did you know that George Michael also filled in for Freddie Mercury with Queen too? For somebody yes. to love? And the reason I know fill, or filled in? Yeah, they did a he he George Michael performed Somebody to Love at I think it was one of the AIDS um life life ball thingies that goes on i don't I, i'm not quite sure 100 percent, but i could do some research really quick well one of the things i know that he did do was for the queen tribute That's that what it was. lisa That's stansfield what it was. also did um uh i want to be free lisa stansfield performed queen oh, really? and george michael also did a couple songs in that same tribute to queen at the time so you know they can play all kinds of things, so I'm really happy about that. We got to yeah. read a couple more comments, unless you had more to say on that. Oh, no, no, no. I just want to make sure um, all the comments are read tonight. Yeah, so one's coming from jo- uh, somebody else here on Instagram, which I love. <laughs> so Joseph White said, 
Is there a foreskin podcast? Oh. I've been trying to find one, and I wrote back a whole podcast about foreskin. Oh, boy. He says, yes, it would be great for us foreskin havers and lovers. I mean, I'm here for a show episode about that because oh, yeah. I think there are – I agree with him, and – I love foreskin on my partners. I'm not, I don't have a preference, preference. either way, yeah. but I love it. I don't either way, but I don't know. Oh, wow. A whole show on that. We know what it takes to produce this show, Cody. Yeah. So I'm not sure that that would really be feasible, but hey, I think I he mean, should do it. I and was we'll going to say, in, and we'll have he, him on our show. I was going to say, if we, if he even wants to come in and we can, he can help us produce a show about it. I would love that. Because I want to know more about it, and because I love foreskin too, and uh, I don't mean I don't have a preference either way, just like you. But yeah, I think it would be great to learn all about it. I'm going to reach out to him and say, let's get him on the show and say and talk more about this, and we will have him on Tags Live soon. I hope. Perfect. Lastly, we have to shout out to Saint Charles of Aberdeen, oh. who writes, "Cody is so cute." <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. Okay. <laughs> St. Charles, by the way, watches us on YouTube. And we love our YouTube listeners. We're live on YouTube right now. And often we don't get to those comments. You can always listen to Tags Podcasts, Tags Live on YouTube as well. Just go to youtube.com forward slash Tags Podcast. Okay. And speaking, we got to clear up something because we reported on episode 433 the other day about Aretha Franklin's iconic song, A Natural Woman, that the transgender community, we actually said it was one particular group in the Netherlands. I remember saying that Mm -hmm. in Norway to be particular. And It was this whole controversy of the trans community is up in arms over the iconic song, uh, You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, and it should be removed from Apple Music and Spotify because it's offending the trans community. And they even went as far as to say that it's causing violence towards the trans community. If you listen to episode 433, I think Lincoln, Cody, and myself were definitely... Yep. saying that is not a link to the violence that is happening to the trans community. And no, a song that was written in the 60s should not be canceled at this point. Well, the update that we want to make now is that it's a fake account. Yeah. Essentially Crazy. a bot, a now debunked activist group in Norway called for Aretha's hit 1968 song, like I said, You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, to be removed. They were called the Transcultural Mindfulness Alliance. Well, turns out that's fake, and nothing about it is true. It was, I think, just a fake account, right, Cody? I think it was a parody account. So they would put out fake news. And what's really kind of embarrassing is that some real actual, we're not news people, but I mean, we report on, we report on a lot of hot topics, but at the end of the day, we give our opinions and we reflect and we give advice, things of that nature. Some real actual CNN news outlets type deals actually reported on this. And it was, if I was a news outlet, I would be kind of beside myself if, if this if we fell for this trap we sort of did like everybody else did and yeah, the sad did. part about it is that the group have updated their twitter account their biography their bio to now say they're a parody satire i don't know what's very they were definitely trying to do something and cause drama and they did it with an iconic african american black Motown Aretha, which, by the way, a legend was named, you know, one of the top vocalists by, uh, I believe, Rolling it was Stone. Rolling Stone, mm-hmm. and they did it, which caused a lot of. I think to do that, I don't think what's satire about it. You're not SNL. We know when we tune into SNL, we're getting parody. Mm-hmm. There was some great skits about George Santos over the weekend with 
that, but you know what you're getting when you tune mm -hmm. into something like that. When you put out something like that, that is going to cause friction to a community that is already marginalized, mm. to a community that is already being murdered every single day. I say this all the time. We could go on and on and report on the, the deaths of our trans brothers and sisters every day, it would take up the whole show if we yeah. really did that. And so to come out later, to put that out there and cause dissent and confusion and really create a divide where we're already divided and say, oops, we're just a satire group, haha, -ha, is really lascivious in so many ways. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh But we need to clear that up. We had to move yeah. on from that. And Callie Dad says, LOL, Norwegians. <laughs> we don't blame all Norwegians because we know we have a lot of listeners there. But, you know. In Norwegia. I do remember saying that, though, on the show. Go, this was from the Netherlands. So keep this in mind. Yeah. I, You know, I always say I worked in radio in the past and I worked for an R&B old school and when i heard the netherlands coming up as this was a trans group from there i was a little skeptical for it mm. when i first heard it did you have anything else to add to no I, I i agree with you though i think that they probably should have done a better job of promoting i'm glad they put it that they're a satire and parody site on their on their bio right now but they probably should have did that a while ago before all this came out and the hubbub came about so yeah yeah i don't really see where you put stuff out there and it's a parody anyways moving on we gotta follow up on a story that we were talking about biopics and one of the people that we were talking about was madonna madonna we've reported in the past is was writing and apparently scheduled to produce her own biopic about her life story and she had narrowed it in according to news that we had heard to julia gardner who i love to play her and that's been scrapped and that's according to variety.com oh. and they it was it had a really universal pictures was actually it was in development there and it was scheduled to go forward. She was going to direct it. I don't know where it got caught up in. You know, Cody, to produce a movie, it's a huge deal. And oh, yeah. she wanted it. She's a big fan. I've heard her say, Madonna, huge fan of the Elvis biopic that's currently nominated right now for Golden Globes, mm -hmm. Academy Awards. And I just think that maybe it just wasn't, meeting up to standards she had aligned oh. herself with some really good a, a co-writer that has a good history of producing really good material out there um but you know how these things go i mean mm -hmm. on our level i can relate to it we were trying to get a whole tv show off the ground we had a pilot and, you know, you work with people, you get like little grains, like a squirrel, like, let's go this way. And mm -hmm. somebody shows interest. And then oftentimes it amounts to nothing. And it's hard to get material into the entertainment stratosphere when it's mm -hmm. on a larger scale, when you really need backing. And so, you know, it's scrapped. The good news for Madonna fans is, though, she's doing her world tour, yeah. celebrating 40 decades of it. So I don't know if it's really a loss. And she said in that she's still working on it. Yeah. And I think it'll come down the pipeline at some point, but it's just not going to happen anytime soon. Yeah, I really hope it does come about because... I, I really would love to know all about Madonna's life. I know we know so much about her about her already because she's literally an open book, the definition, the textbook definition of what an open book is. But I know that there's so much more to her life that we don't know yet. And I know that it's so juicy and it can be so salacious and, and just so wonderful. It will help us know the mind of a superstar so much more. So I really, really hope it gets picked back up. And it's just so sad. Yeah, but in the meantime, we'll go see her in concert and spend a lot oh, yeah. of money on that show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we have to move on to a 
porn star that I'm a big fan of, a porn star that I actually met last year in person mm -hmm. at the Cyber Socket Awards, where we were nominated for Best Podcast. We didn't win, but we were nominated. We were in good company. And at there, there was a lot of porn stars nominated, one of them being Chirac, who, like I said, I'm a big fan fan of oh he yes he just walked in paris fashion week at the louise louise louis gabriel nucci fall 2023 paris fashion week show and he took the opportunity cody to mm -hmm. make a political statement about where he's from he's iranian from he's iranian american but he has really never spoke up about this and he essentially at the end of the runway he did not tell the designers he was going to do this he held up Ooh. a sign that said stop executions in iran and wow. we all know what's going on in iran for years and years we were talking about uh M masa uh the I have it here, Amini. Masa Amini recently, who mm -hmm. was executed essentially for showing her hair. But that's mm -hmm. just one of many. He has really sh shied away from making a statement. He's a, he wrote, being Iranian and part of a marginalized community means I can't in good conscience go on using my platform strictly for work. I've been trying to do both for almost four months. Iranians back home are in the midst of a revolution. Living in diaspora means we have a duty to be their voice while the IRA limits internet access and has been arresting, torturing, executing innocent prisoners with impunity. I know it's not what you came here to see, but it's what's happening to my people right now. And the international mm -hmm. community has been silent. We are a community in mourning at the moment. Please bear with us and continue to share stories and support this movement. We need voices like yours in the international community. Uh, I am all here for what he did. It's yeah. like this fashion house asked him to be a part of, as a, essentially a celebrity, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to ask him. He took the opportunity to make it a fashion moment, and he looks fierce on the runway, by the way. Oh, you guys. my God. I'm, I, I, love I, I love him. Me and too. by the way, he's so tough and dom top in his porn. But when I met him in person, he could not have been kinder mm -hmm. and gentler and listening to what I had. I mean, it was like a nice exchange. And you never know when you go up to somebody that's in the spotlight, how are they going to be received? Are they going to be not? You know, he was so engaging and i just want to say gentle and sweet which Aww. goes yeah that's so and nice goes to show we have so many sides to our individuality yeah. and i'm here for what he did what are your thoughts oh no i 100 agree with you he's this really shows the content of his character in addition to being insanely hot he's a really great human being this is and this is how you use your platform for good in the world. This is how you show bravery in the face of opposition. Because he probably did uh, find some backlash from the fashion house whose show he was in. But also, this puts him on the radar, radar of the Iranian government. So I think that him speaking out and, and doing fighting the good fight is so amazing. It's just so brave. And I applaud him for letting such an important issue not fall by the wayside because i feel like so many people are not talking about this anymore right like, it's not in the public eye it's not right up in the forefront so thank you for putting it back in the forefront of our minds because it really is a tragedy that's going on over there right now right and i just think anytime somebody like him you know it's not like he's doing it to his only fans he took the opportunity somebody put him on a platform uh, for fashion week and to use that, I think, it was really important. And you're right. We need to remember the atrocities that are going on around the world yes. against not just our community, but to women. Yes. Of course, our community, for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Much like this next story that I almost forgot about to talk about, Beyonce. <laughs> I would let you forget about this. <laughs> Thank you. I know for some reason I didn't have it in my list here, but <laughs> Beyonce. So this is perfect. This is the perfect spot for it, honestly. It's the perfect spot for it because it kind of relates to what Chirac is talking about. Yes. And you may have heard, we talked about it on this show recently. I love all the music news that we keep talking about on this show. And by the oh, way, good. we have a surprise coming up with our show soon related to music so and you can be a part of it too so stay tuned in the next couple weeks we are going to announce something new for our six-year anniversary but Beyonce like we talked about was recently performing in Dubai it was a sold out concert at the Atlantis Mm -hmm. resort and you can look up pictures of the atlantis there it's like beautiful architecture and gorgeous yeah. she was apparently paid rumored between 23 and 35 million but either way cody <laughs> That's i a, mean that is a check right there that yeah is the, the whole bag that is not half a bag that is the entire bag plus some Celebrity star studded. Everybody wanted to go to it. It happened just the other day over the weekend. And the controversy came because a lot of people called Beyonce out because she performed in a place, United Arab of Emirates, in a mm -hmm. place that is it is illegal to be gay, LGBTQ, and it is also punishable by death. Now, I want to make a quick comment on that. I looked at a little more research and no one currently that I've read has mm -hmm. been charged or murdered in mm -hmm. United Arab of Emirates. And I would almost argue that the amount of attention that they want right now and people to move there. And I, we were talking recently about tr international travel and where we can move. And there's places like they want people to move there. Yeah. I met a couple back a few years ago that were gay that lived in gay couple that mm -hmm. lived in uh dubai yeah. i dated a guy back in 2011 that he had a lot of work over there and he said he would go out now when he would go out to the quote-unquote gay clubs okay you, you couldn't take your shirt off but oh. they had these amazing dancers up on the podium. Oh. And it was this whole interesting thing. So she's being called out for performing in a place that is anti-LGBT amongst coming off of the heels of an album, Renaissance, where she's really showing her love for the LGBT community. Do you see where this could be a conflict, Cody? On, Or do you think at the end of the day she should, I mean, she was offered all this money. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the money is neither here nor there. Yes, it's it's a lot of money. So I if it was offered to me, I probably would take it as well. So but I think that at first I was definitely taken aback uh, because see, Beyonce is so uh, she's such an ally to the community. So I really think that I was taken aback and I really kind of thought about it. And the more I started to read about it and hear about all Can of, I stop you right there, okay. though? Has she always been an ally to the community? Or I do you think so. that because of Renaissance, she's become more of an ally? Because I have never felt like she was an ally to the community. Really? So not really. I I have I feel like she's always been a, an ally to the to the community. I've could, heard of the one story that I've heard only from my backup dancer type friends mm -hmm. that they have said you do not speak to Beyonce in other words if you're hired to work on a tour with her or you do not speak to her which is fine maybe that's yeah. how she works uh, where on the other hand Madonna and Janet are Janet calls her backup dancers the kids and she's like one with them Madonna mm -hmm. I can actually speak from experience working twice with her that uh, we talked to her and she was really cool I don't know that Beyonce has always been one with that the the gays and all the behind the scenes stuff, mm -hmm. but maybe that's just how she works. Yeah, that's probably, and I, from what I understand, that is probably just how she works. I mean, I've never met the woman, so I couldn't speak to it from experience, but her music really s says so much to me and it speaks volumes about her platform and what she actually stands for. So 
in my opinion, I think that Beyonce is here for the LGBTQ community and she's here for black women, uh, for women and for people of color as well. So I think the backlash is kind of asinine because so many artists, including gay icons, some you have mentioned already, have performed in Dubai and even gay artists have performed in Dubai, Elton John, to say the very least, uh, to say the very most. And then people like Steve Mackey and Avery Wilson have also performed in Dubai. So I think that maybe people are just upset with Beyonce because she's Beyonce and they think that she should be above it all. Uh, go ahead. Well, the two things I will say on that, and I do agree with you, and thank you for pointing out Elton John and a gay artist. Many people have performed there. The one thing I will say is she really has been untouched. People can't say anything about her. No one ever has anything. Dare you say anything bad about Beyonce? I do think the reason why it's a little sensitive right now is because she came out with Renaissance and Renaissance was dedicated to, I think it was an uncle. Yeah. That was good. But, uncle and Johnny. the LGBTQ and the LGBTQ community. I mean, there's so many references in there and artists that she. So I think a lot of people were saying, what's her first move uh, post Renaissance album? But I will say uh, beyond all that, mm -hmm. her father made the point and everybody that saw that concert in Dubai is it was a Beyonce concert. It was not Renaissance. Mm -hmm. So in other words, there is a Renaissance tour in the making coming up okay. in the, like down the road, hopefully this year, maybe next year that you're going to get all those songs. So if you went, if you were lucky enough to go to Dubai and see this concert, you would have not heard any of the Renaissance tracks. So she, all the money that went into that, the millions of dollars, none of it was the new material. So the new material is being saved for a world tour for yes. people, the LGBT community to really embrace. And so for that, I think, you know what, make your cash girl. There's always <laughs> going to be controversies, whether you do this, whether you do that, people are always going to be mad. People have a lot to say online. What are people saying? People Xavier. are saying, Xavier is saying, as much as I like Beyonce, if we can criticize FIFA for having the World Cup in Qatar, we can criticize Beyonce for a concert in Dubai. And I Ooh, did good think point. of point. I did think of that. I just didn't even bring it up because oh, it Xavier <laughs> beat you to it, bitch. Because it didn't support my stance. So I didn't bring it at all. <laughs> I agree, Xavier. Thank you but so it, much. And it's even not, you know what, I think... Cody, actually, and thank you, Xavier, is I, well, you and I were talking about this. We have a meeting pre-show, yeah. and I think Cody was thinking that I was going to be all up in arms over this. And the only thing that. I ever, w thing I wanted to say was, you know, you almost can't say anything about Beyonce without being crucified. That was my only thing. I think everyone, there's always going to be controversies. We've had controversies even in our little nook of a cranny of a mm -hmm. art artistic moment that we produce all the yeah. time. It's part of the game. And in social media land these days, there's always going to be something. I think the fact that it's a good discussion to be had. I love, yeah. I didn't oh, even I think agree. of the world cup I and that, <laughs> and that was a great, that's a great point, but it's a conversation to be had, not you're wrong. Cancel oh, yeah. them. This kind of thing. I think it's a great conversation to be had to kind of think about, we really need to think of our actions as we move forward. And someone like a Beyonce that's going to get up to 35 million and it's you got to think about how who already has millions and millions of dollars Would is this really the right move for me from a pr standpoint yes yeah. we're going to be talking about george santos in a minute but <laughs> Caledad also says watching us live beyonce's perfectionism requires complete focus okay yeah so does and madonna's then... and janet's but whatever <laughs> Kelly, and he also says, Uncle Johnny made my dress that cheap spandex. She looks a mess. That's part of Beyonce's. <laughs> One of Beyonce's I, didn't get to, I haven't gotten to that song yet. It's so, so good. It's heated. Um, so I have a point. I, um, I also think that because Beyonce is where she is, why, why is she open up to so much criticism? 
What is it about Beyonce? No, because people have not criticized other people for going to this, for going to Dubai and performing. I could, I think be, the difference between Dubai and Qatar is people, I feel like, have actually been assaulted and murdered for being homosexual there. And in Dubai, you stated previously that nobody has been charged with homosexuality. So I think that that, there's a a minute distinction when it comes to Correct. But in our meeting earlier, you stated, well, Janet has performed there. Madonna has performed there. I wasn't going to say anything. No, but they were... (laughs) <laughs> there were earlier times. I think what we know now, I mean, we didn't even do a show on this before. We were talking about where as LGBT are we looking to travel in the world was one of our recent topics. Yes. And we were talking about would we go to certain parts of the world mm-hmm. if you knew you weren't accepted L- from your LGBT status. And most, and, and we no. were like, absolutely no. I said no. Do we really want to give our dollars to that? The answer was no. The, I think what's happening now in culture right now is the conversation. We're actually, we just talked about Chirac and Iran. The conversation is coming up. Yes, world problems in Iran forever have mm-hmm. occurred. Um, United Arab Emirates is a relatively new construct. They're man-made. They're a man-made location. Mm-hmm. And they're, yes, It has probably been illegal there. The conversation just hasn't been focused there. But as they continue to grow and grow, and Atlantis, I went to the original Atlantis in the Bahamas. It's it's huge. It's like, so it's all falling into place because they really want to get the tourism coming their way. They are not realizing that they have this old construct in the making that has been, and that's now coming up. Beyonce has a brand new album and everybody is like about Beyonce's Renaissance and how she's for the LGBT. So it does make sense that it's all aligning right now to Beyonce Mm -hmm. and people are pointing the finger right now that, you know, I, I to me it all makes sense that mm-hmm. yes other people have in the past but culturally and what's going on in society and what we're talking about now is all relevant now she happens to be at the butt but please Cody she has been free of controversy whether or not she's needed it and I would argue she has in the past the bad fashion when she was part of that oh, group. Oh, part of Beyonce <laughs> oh. <a> Destiny's Child. <laughs> she has been free of it. And it's like the land and her world of Beyonce. Completely cheated oh, on her. Okay, I can't. <laughs> I, I need to move on because we have a lot more to I'm a, I want to say one more thing. Say one more thing. I there are places in the United States where there are anti LGBTQ laws in effect. So are we just not supposed to go anywhere? I I get it. And I do understand. And I, I am looking at her with a side eye. However, it's all about what she does from here. That That's the final answer. Good point. And Arkansas just came out with making drag queens equivalent to porn stars. And they cannot, you can't see them. And so are we now like... I mean, I don't have a ticket to Arkansas anytime soon, <laughs> but I feel for the people of Arkansas yes, because exactly. they're not going to get their drag queen performances like at their pride events. And that's really needs to be put out there. Anyways, we have to move on. And we love that you're commenting. We are live on a Wednesday night on this rainy night in New York City. But we've got to talk about the liar, the biggest liar right now, George Santos. You may know him. He is part a senator uh, in New York, not where I live here in New York, but in what part of New York is he a senator? Let me, let me Google this really quick. Google that. But where he, I... <laughs> we don't even need to talk about that because he has just gotten into it online with Trixie Mattel. Okay, why? 
Drag George Santos engaged in a Twitter spat with drag race legend Trixie Mattel the other night. Santos began by blasting comic impressions of him. So over the weekend, John Lovitz did an impersonation of him on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. There was another one on another late night show. And then, of course, SNL did a brilliant one that I was living for. Hilarious. That was so fun. You got to check that out. But he, quote, said, I have now been enshrined in late night TV history with all these impersonations, but they are all terrible so far, Bragg Santos. John Lovitz is supposed to be one of the greatest comedians of all time. Mm, Arguably. (laughs) Arguable. <laughs> and that was embarrassing for Jade. him, not me. These comedians need to step their game up. Well, that caused Trixie Mattel to say maybe the source material was weak, Ooh. which I love. And George replied, clearly, you know all about weak acting skills at Trixie Mattel. Because apparently <laughs> she did not do well when she had to do her acting skills. What do you call that when they... The Snatch Game. The Snatch Game. Who was she playing, she Cody? She played RuPaul, and it was horrible. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, George, you got one there. That was but, a real queen read right there. The, I mean, it was. <laughs> Shows the show. For someone that has said he has not done drag before, and then he came out later under pressure at LAX, and then said, yes, I did drag. I was young. But he's also against drag because he's calling it groomers. He's one of those that is calling them groomers. He's all over the place, and he has no place to be causing a commotion on Twitter. Mattel shot back with a quote, deny um about the denying he was ever a drag queen uh mattel said i am not an actor i was young and i had fun at a festival so trixie said that but Mm -hmm. that's a quote from george santos yes essentially saying when he did do drag i was young and i had fun at a festival so she got her nudge back in there what do you have to think about this i mean in the land and the ever giving of our community. And I mean, any person that has a podcast or a talk show, George Santos is giving us so much. So much. Because the so lies, much. they just never end with him. I, I don't understand. Pathological. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I've lied here and there, you know, speckled a little salt over something to embellish here and yeah. there. Yeah. But absolutely. I, I mean, this is insanity. Yeah, he is just, like you said, pathological, and it's just ridiculous. And I saw this tweet, and that's when I knew that Katara Ravage had lived at one point in time. So I I didn't know where or what happened, but I knew that his alter ego, Katara, had lived. Uh, Because only a queen can come back with such a witty and scathing retort. This was like four years ago that Trixie did this snatch game. So the knowledge was there. And I'm so glad that Trixie got back with him because you can't let a queen get the upper hand on you. You got to read back, Mm -mm. honey. (laughs) Mm -mm. I'm telling you, you can't. No. Yeah. It was legendary. It was really, really good. The fact that he thinks that he can get away with this and no. I really want to see him canceled. I want to see him squashed. I think he is disgusting on so many levels. I just want to see how this is played out. I said the same thing about Trump in the past. And in some ways, I've seen the downfall. But I think this is even juicier because we are not afraid to call out Somebody, because apparently he's gay and we don't want him on our team, but I will call out somebody like this any day. Yeah, likewise. And uh, so he is from uh, New York's third congressional district, which uh, is made up of parts of Long Island and Queens, basically. Kelly Dad says, watching us live, of course, on a Wednesday night. 
The Santos Congressional Library is open. Read, bitch. <laughs> the queen jumped out of that crew neck. Ugh. Thank you for those horrible sweaters. I hate those crew neck sweater vests that he keeps wearing. They're oh, awful. Goodness. I mean, what is this, 1984? It's just awful. And I, I was going to say something that's kind of awful. <laughs> he, he looks like a serial killer is what he looks like. That's is the horrible. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's bad. Yeah, yeah, because I don't, I don't want to put that on him. It's, it's. He looks really, really disturbed, and I thought that. Wow. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. I know this is a story that's going to keep giving and giving, but we don't have enough time for that right now. What we do have (laughs) time for is to give some advice to a listener. And one of our favorite things to do on Tags Podcast, of course, Tags Live as well, is to give our take, give some advice to you, whether it's sex or dating. And of course, one of them coming, I think he's watching right now live, is from James who lives in Chicago and James wrote into us and he says, Hey guys, I'm hoping you can answer a question for me for this book for tonight. As I have mentioned before, I was interested in the guy that we shall call Antonio, but he ended up moving back to his parents' house in Texas for a while after we became friends during that time. I had a night off and I went out with some friends in Andersonville Mm-hmm. Okay. Here in Chicago, after getting to the gay bar and drinking way too much on the on my only night off, I can relate. I looked across the bar and saw this very handsome guy who made eye contact with me. Fast forward later, I ended up going to a video store that allows you to play in certain rooms and also has glory holes. To my surprise, the man that I had made eye contact with showed up where he started to fool around. Oh, I've been there. The police closed it down at 3 a.m. and I started to walk home. He pulled his car around like a knight in shining armor and picked me up and took me to his place. We had amazing sex that night and the next morning and I did the infamous bike ride of shame the next morning back to my place. My question is, we've recently shared talking about actually going on a real date. Mm -hmm. And I keep trying to set it up with him, but he goes quiet on me for long periods of time. I don't want to be overbearing or to ruin anything. And I don't typically try to date people that I've hooked up with so quickly, but he seems to be a really nice guy and I would really like to take him on a date, but let me know if I should keep texting him and trying to set it up or when I should just quit and walk away. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a really interesting question as I'm kind of always in that current mindset of when is too much. Yeah. I mean, I had, there's a guy that I've seen for two dates so far that I met on the naked beach that I keep talking about on this show. And I reached out, I was, my neighbor came over last night and I was saying, we went out last Friday and I haven't heard from him, but I want to reach out to him. Everything went great on the second day. Should I reach out to him tomorrow? My neighbor was like, put everything in the text. Say, but very dis- mm-hmm. succinctly. Succinctly say, how's, how's your week going? And when can I see you next? So I did do that. He's responded during this show. and. Oh. He's yeah. Are we he's, reading it online? What's going on? No. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're giving James advice, so I don't want to take it over. Sorry. He did say, lastly, how? When are you free? So that's how that's going. So okay. I think part my, part of my first advice to you, James, is if you really like this guy, all bets are off. Put it out there. Push a little bit in a direct text and say, Hey, I'd really like, I, I was, I'm in, was intrigued by you when we met, I'd really like to get you get to know you more. And maybe one more sentence, like these short sentences, Mm -hmm. when can I see you next question mark? It keeps it very direct and to the point and you don't put, let people off the hook Yeah, is, because one of my pet peeves is is talking too much online on the apps and going in circles. No one wants a pen pal. That's not why we 
chose this game of meeting mm-hmm. people. No one wants to have endless conversations online. So to be direct, but put it out there and be direct and, and see when can I see you next? Yes. When can we make a plan soon? Because I would really like to see you. Put it out there. Don't be afraid to put it out there. Now, if he doesn't respond, and if you get the runaround, then you know, okay, it's time to move on. I don't really know his story. It's who knows what's really going on in his world. And then I really do think you need to move on. But I think to be direct and to the point once maybe do it one more i say do it one more time even if you don't get the response be affirmative get what you want if you still don't get it move on what's your advice i you know what you're reading my mind that's why i'm laughing because i have we have we share so much of the same opinions on this i think that you never know exactly what's going on in someone's life so you can't take a lot of the non reciprocity of the situation into too hard too harshly on you on you because he might be busy he might have things to do he might be i've encountered so many different scenarios when it comes to my dating life in the past of guys having a family issues or work issues and whatnot. I think that what you should do, my personal uh, opinion, as far as it's concerned, my advice to you is once you have reached your limit, then I say text him one more time after that and see yes. and, and put it out there and say, you know, when can we get together? When it's, when are you free? I would really, really like to get to know you because once you've reached your limit, if you do it one more time, then at least you can say to yourself, yes. I, I did the thing. I tried my hardest. I did everything that I could do in my power to actually get together with this guy. You won't have any regrets oh. moving forward. Thank you, Cody. <laughs> you said it exactly what I was saying exactly too. I told you because when you were when we were going through it, when you were saying yours, I was like, oh, this bitch is reading my mind over here. <laughs> because the thing you need to do for yourself, you realize that a lot of this is in your head and yeah. you need to have some sort of closure or sanity for yourself. So if you set that limit that, okay, this was my limit here, but I'm going to try one more time after that. Yeah. And then that's my limit. That is your ultimate limit there. I did it today with the guy that, and it was so funny because I was sitting with my neighbor last night and I had no reason, the the whole thing about meeting somebody that you're interested in, you go through these ebbs and flows of, he, uh, he liked me. I mean, I think I was telling you, Oh, he the guy that I went on the second date with, he was romantic and he had the birthday s- celebration for me and he was holding my hand and kissing me here and there. And that was Friday. But then he, none of us reached out to each other up until here we are on Wednesday. And of course, my mind is racing like, oh, who's going to reach out next? What's going on? Is he really that interested? Even though I have no reason to think differently. And my neighbor was like, I know it sucks, right? Yeah. And he's kind of right. It does suck when you're it sucks and it doesn't it sucks and it doesn't suck. It it doesn't suck because you're interested in somebody that's shown interest in you and you Mm -hmm. met somebody. It doesn't suck for that. It sucks because maybe it's not happening in the timeline that you want it to happen. And life is happening for you, but life is also happening for them. And you don't know them that well to know where they are at. The book is coming out in the spring, y'all. We are (laughs) co-authors. We are are (laughs) co-authoring. Let's do it, boo. I would love to. I would really honestly love to. Stay tuned, Um, y'all. I also, I kind of want to also say this. You can't really gauge you can and you can't gauge interest in yourself i want to say from my personal experience especially with joe because it's the last person that i've ever been on a date with we would text nonstop 
And I think that I could pretty much gauge his interest in me. Sometimes it hasn't been like that, of course, but I feel like you know whether or not somebody's interested in you. So go with your gut and make sure that you just just do what feels comfortable for you and and, and what you know in your heart that you'll be able to live with at the end of the day. You know, you lucked out with Joe because of what you just said right now on you were both equally interested in, and I don't know if it was just because, well, it turns out you both were into each other two years Wait, later. <laughs> Sexually, two years later. I don't know if it was because of the pandemic. You were both, you know, you met on Grinder, but we were, I was going to read a reddit thread that i'm not going to do right now and it had okay. to do with a similar thread about i haven't heard from this person i think people are really busy i mean ideally cody where mm -hmm. i'm at right now i would really want to just have somebody that maybe i saw yeah. once a week or once every you know that would be big for me mm -hmm. and i don't even know if i'm it's just that i met somebody that we are copacetic and mm -hmm. interested in each other and it's exciting right now but i don't even know what that means i don't know if other than i would i just want to kind of continue this journey and if we don't see each other this week next week would be great yeah. if he's not interested then i want to know sooner than later yeah. because then i want to know if i can move on but it's a whole mental fuck that it you go totally through is, right james it of sucks. course watching us live said uh excuse me thank you because we're giving you advice right now mm -hmm. i just don't want to become a pest you're not being a pest it's been a hot minute going on a date i feel rusty uh dates uh exactly well i don't think you need to worry about how you'll be on the date i think you just need to secure when you see him next and you need to kind of put i love the advice that we did give i'm going to pat ourselves on the back of Put it out there. When can I see you next? And be put one more, give yourself one more where you can try and lock him into a time because mm -hmm. the that's what it all comes down to. We are not looking for pen pals in this world. <laughs> we are not looking for a pen pal. Thank you, my sister. She gave me that quote. I don't want a pen pal. I want... If you had a good time, state that you had a great time and I want yeah. to see you. But give yourself one more time. And then if he doesn't, then it's time to move on. Yeah. And there's a, and I hear you, James, because oftentimes on a hookup, it can become all about the sex. And it's easier. I think I said recently on a show, it's easy to almost write somebody off if it was just a hookup. Oh, yeah. Where the person that I met, I met on the naked beach and we had a conversation on the beach and then I met him on New Year's Eve and then we ultimately went on our date. But you met on Grindr oh, and Grindr. two years later, look at you. I mean, Grindr is the ultimate hookup. So <laughs> what else is James saying? James is also saying he wanted to go out, but he did say he was very busy. So I just don't want to become that person. And honestly, we're I all do, busy. I well, sorry, we're all I busy. I hear you, right? Facts on that one. I I hear you on that. And so when you actually go on a date, and I actually do believe that you will go on this date because. It seems to me, from what you have told me in the story, that he is genuinely interested in you. So when you go on the date, please put out there that you that your communication style is not really aligning with him. And please put this in the most kind way possible, because that is something if you're like, oh, you don't call me enough. That is something that can come come across mm. as very a little bit needy. But if you say, you know, I I kind of wish that you would be a little bit more communicative with me or something like to that nature. You, what you feel Ooh, it out. That's what feeling like. a little. You think so? You think so? I just think the fact that he said, the guy said to James, he said, he's very busy. He wants to go out, but he said, mm -hmm. he's very busy. I think you need to then, you know, not be confrontational about it because we're all busy. Yeah. And, and let's be honest, Cody, mm -hmm. let's be honest, Cody. 
We're all busy. Yes. We, we all are. can make, we all make time for the things that we want to the do. It doesn't matter. Nobody yes. is that busy. Nobody is President Biden right now that has the schedule of President. Oh, oh, I threw in President Biden. No one is that busy <laughs> that we cannot take the time to meet with or Beyonce. Or, <laughs> Madonna or Janet that we can't find the time to meet with those people that we really want to. So that's a cop, cop out. I just think you need to, I said, I, I think something like, I, I know you're really busy. I'm really busy. I would really like to see you because the thing is what well, they met at a certain period of time, mm -hmm. that spark that you meet in a hookup will fade and it will be that much easier to, say, oh, yeah, that was that, and put it in the back burner. Mm -hmm. James needs to get him now and say, I know you're busy. How about a coffee or a quick mm -hmm. drink, you know, an hour, an hour in next week? So what's your, what's your free date? So do you think that because if to me, it seems like because he has been communicating, been the principal person to reach out from what I understand that he's setting up a, a routine or a pattern for him to be the principal person. I would like to see how he, if he could possibly break up that pattern so that both parties could be uh, communicative and, and make sure that they reach out to each other. That, that is, that's the point that I was trying to make that I, I think it. that you're, he's setting himself up to actually be the uh, the person that always is the one that reaches out and i think he needs to to break that up some way somehow brainstorm about it i would personally be like um babes just so you know i'm i'm a more communicative person i and i you know i'm kind of looking for somebody that's a little bit more communicative either he's down with it or he's not down with it yeah i think we're saying the same thing final yeah. word final advice is put it out there one more time and and try and lock him into a meetup yeah yes is that what we're saying for james 100% 100% do it and then let it go let it go <laughs> Idina not, Menzel. It. Not Idina Menzel. Yeah. <laughs> not Frozen <laughs> at the end of the show. <laughs> I was that is a shock to me. I never thought that would come. come I just up. watched a documentary on her and it was really good. And I do love her. I've seen her. We yes. And lastly, thank you, James. We always want I hope that helped a little bit. I know we were a little all over the place, but <laughs> I hope that really helped you. And you can always Please ask us for sex relationship advice. We are here for you. We are in the same game in many ways. So DM us on our Instagram account at Tags Podcast or go to tagspodcast.com and email us via the website. Yeah. Lastly, I want to talk about one of my favorite people, Pedro Pascal. Oh, yes. Ooh, Thank I you. love him. <laughs> you know, I'm a fan of Pedro Pascal because I watched Narcos back in the day and mm -hmm. he's so good in it. He's, he's in a current him. show right now that you're watching, Cody, called The yes. Last of Us, which is it good? It's so good. I cried the first episode. It's like 10 minutes in. It, uh, it's it so looks good, great. It's HBO scary, Max. Though. Are you here for scary things? Absolutely. Let's do it. He was on the red carpet promoting that show the last of us and the reporter asked him how you doing and essentially asked him like how do you feel about being a daddy and pedro opened up his twitter account and said that the last person that tweeted him said he's a cool slutty daddy and he confirmed yep i'm a cool slutty daddy which i love that he said that what are your thoughts on that, Cody? I mean, I love that he's so sexy. He could definitely be my daddy. At PS, I would love to be the cool slutty daddy. I would love to walk around in no shirt and short shorts for my kids' friends to be like, "Your dad is just so hot," and for my kid to be like, "Ugh, my stop looking at my dad like that." <laughs> That's a literally life goes for me. So, I mean, but what do you think about it? Would you like to be a slutty daddy? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I mentioned recently somebody called me a zaddy, which mm -hmm. is a little bit above a tier of a daddy. It's just you have a little bit more swagger, according oh, yeah. to online Wikipedia. <laughs> but Jaqua Williams, who watches us on YouTube said it's fine when you're called daddy until they ask for the keys to the car oh. and spending money then it's not so hot I agree I don't really want to be anybody's daddy sugar daddy, where I, sugar, dad, sugar daddy oh yeah. yeah I'm not trying to be nobody's sugar daddy I'm exactly I'm still trying to get I'm a sugar daddy sugar baby yeah <laughs> so i agree and no i mean embrace where you're at i mean the whole thing about aging is that it's a up and down and you just got to embrace where you're at and it's he pedro pascal is i love that he's embracing and read that on the red carpet yep i'm a cool slutty daddy i'm a cool slutty daddy too or zaddy and Me too. own it <laughs> Okay, <laughs> cheers to that then. Cheers. Well, on that note, we want to thank our live virtual audience for tuning in and for weighing in. We couldn't do this show without you. You make the show. We've got some surprises coming your way in the coming weeks. Stay tuned for that. We're here every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time. You can follow my co-host Cody on Instagram. He's got two. He's a life coach. Follow him at KMD Coaching. KMD Coaching or his personal account, Mr. Maurice. Follow me, I am underscore Steve V, or at Tags Podcast on all social media platforms. And in the meantime, Cody, continue having hot gay, gay sex. sex. Yes, yeah. people.